For many climate change campaigners, aviation is a big target, not just the existing 2.5% of carbon dioxide emissions, but fears that this could increase tenfold by 2050. But what if we could actually bring a totally zero emission aircraft that could operate commercial routes? Well, Crownfield Aerospace Solutions, a British company attached to the industry's leading university, is racing to be the first in the world to do just that. And we're joined now by Jenny Kavanagh, the Chief Strategy Officer, and Paul Hunt, the CEO of the company, to tell us all about the project. So Jenny, just tell us first of all, what is this hydrogen plan that you have and why hydrogen? Um, so first of all, the plan. So what we're doing is uh, we're leading a consortium, uh, which is a UK backed uh, government funded project from the Aerospace Technology Institute to create a hydrogen propulsion system, fuel cell system for a nine seat Brit Norman Islander. So essentially we're going to be ripping out the conventional engines and replacing them with a fuel cell, electric motor and uh, gaseous hydrogen tanks. So that uh, the end goal is to create a cert the, the world's first truly green certified aircraft for passenger service by 2025. And why hydrogen? So we actually started looking at full battery electric uh, and very quickly came to the conclusion that even with optimistic battery energy densities, you're, you're not going to get much more than 30 minutes flight time in this aircraft, which doesn't even meet minimum diversion requirements. Um, so we quickly went to hybrid electric, which could get the range and under certain circumstances, even reduce carbon emissions, uh, which was great. But we again came to the realization that for two very, very strong reasons, that wasn't going to cut it either. One being that utilization is incredibly important to operators, especially the smaller ones. So the more um, the more sectors that you can get crammed into a day, the better um, for revenue purposes. So if you're having to recharge your batteries in between flights, that's not going to work for them. And secondly, if this industry is going to get to you know, net zero by by 2050, you have to just stop emitting carbon. So hydrogen very, very quickly became the um, the only credible technology to consider. Now, it's interesting. You're starting this with a Britain Norman Islander. Is that a big enough market that's going to make a change? To answer the first part of your question, it is a very commercially viable first step. The island is a great aircraft. It's loved by those that, that currently operate it. It's perfect for the market that it's used in and that it's used typically for short hops. The important thing for us was that we found a small aircraft that, that could be commercially viable. So the island ticks all those boxes. So very viable as a first step, but a chosen first step because that's the level of maturity of the technology today. Once you've done that, that is the quickest way to get to commercial fair paying passengers in a fully certified zero emissions aircraft. We can then in phase two of our program, scale that up. And at that point, that will probably be a 19 seat sized aircraft, still, still fairly small, but scaling up the power requirement. But at the same time, um, importantly, moving to uh, most likely liquid hydrogen to give the range needed that the larger aircraft are typically used for. So by the end of phase two, we'll have a propulsion system fully certified, and that's a, you know, a technical but manageable uh, challenge. Phase three, we can then say, well, now's the time to optimize an aircraft design, 19 seat um, or around about that sort of size, 19 seat, to wrap that optimized design around the then certified propulsion system. So ultimately, you're talking about not just using the propulsion on other platforms, you're actually talking about actually designing an aircraft around the propulsion Correct. system. Correct. Um, because you know, we feel that there's an urgency to what needs to be uh, done here in, in greening uh, aviation. The quickest way is converting. You know, we know that we've been around for 30 years in the aerospace industry working with the regulator. We understand if you want to get things done quickly, if you go with a whole new aircraft and a whole new propulsion system, you're, you're creating a hugely complex uh, hurdle to get over with the regulator. So speed means go for a conversion. But ultimately, to optimize the solution, you need to get uh, both the propulsion system and the aircraft uh, designed um, together. And from our point of view as a, as a company aspiring to design and manufacture aircraft, 
it just makes sense to de-risk it and move it into stages, to go straight into a whole new aircraft and a whole new propulsion system. But we've seen Airbus, for example, drawing up their concept of hydrogen-powered aircraft. Does this mean that you're actually sitting there in Cranfield thinking, we're going to take on Airbus, rather than say we've developed a propulsion system that might apply to Airbus? So you're actually going to compete against Rolls-Royce, for example? No, so we, we think what we're doing is very complementary to what Boeing and Airbus um, are planning to do and will need to do. So we very carefully chose the smaller end of the market, the sub-regional end, 9 to 19 seat, uh, uh, albeit we will then progress to look at, at regional. Um, but the challenges of bringing this new technology on board, there will be much to, to be learned by what we do, but we don't feel we're stepping on their toes. Jenny, can I ask you about what I think is probably the biggest challenge of all, which is the regulator. We know historically getting anything through certification is incredibly expensive nightmare. How do you see yourself actually managing this? That's a really good question because it's it's probably one of the the things that people who are new to the industry completely underestimate. Uh, and because we've been dealing with regulators for you know nearly thirty years, we always knew this was probably going to be the hardest thing. Um, so you have to approach it in a way that is uh, that is understanding of the problems. The way that we've currently been dealing with it is we went through their innovation hub which they've set up which is great and it tends to help new, uh, new starters to the industry try to understand the the landscape but we already know that intuitively so essentially we, we are having to learn along with them and to some extent they're learning from us as well so where are we now on the project we have the aircraft in the hangar uh, currently uh, being worked on, yes. Oh, well, uh, so there really is actually an aircraft being fitted as we speak. It's fantastic. But can I ask about the supply of hydrogen? How do you get hydrogen to the user? How does that work? I mean, if you're in some of the remote parts of the world, for example, or even a small airfield here in the UK, how do we get hydrogen? Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm not going to say it's simple because any new fuel supply is not simple. But the, but the beauty of green hydrogen, especially gaseous hydrogen, is that there is a relatively simple process by which you can have a gas turbine, not gas, wind turbine, big difference, um, or solar panels and creating renewable electricity that, that, that then you can convert into hydrogen. Um, it has twofold um, advantages. One, the hydrogen acts as a storage for any excess electricity that you can then use to turn back into electricity when you need it, or it can be used as a, as a fuel for local uh, ground transportation or indeed for aviation as well. There's a lot of work going on, um, especially in Scotland, but also I think on the Isle of Wight and at various other places, it, it's places in the UK as well. Well, it sounds like an amazing idea and it sounds like you're certainly getting on with it. Well, I know we're going to be talking to you again over the next 18 months or so. And so we wish you every good luck with the project. Thank you for joining us.